Welcome back, everyone! I said I'm going to try and make one of these once a week, and this is obviously later in the week than the first one was. first one being on Monday, and this is now. Should be going up on Thursday, that's why I'm recording it, and hopefully when I'll be posting it. I just, I didn't have the house to myself a lot this week, so. Just Monday was Columbus Day, my dad was home. Tuesday I worked fairly late and just wasn't feeling it. Wednesday, like my stepbrother was home. So I'm doing it today. Today I'm going to start what will probably become a long-running series on this channel based around dragon misconceptions. So things people believe about dragons that when you go look at the myths and like go back and watch like the evolution of like dragon in dragons and culture and such probably don't actually play out the way people expect them to. And there's a few misconceptions I could have started with, but the one I decided to start with today, just because it's kind of in the back of my mind the past few days, is the misconception that the discovery of dinosaur bones is what gave rise to the myth of the dragon. So a brief summary of this belief is that ancient man was just wandering around, doing what they do, they discovered dinosaur bones, and they were just like, oh, what is this monstrosity? Like, what could this have come from? And that's how they create the Legends of Dragons. I am not a fan of this hypothesis of the dragon evolution and origin. Like, at all. Some people have asked me about it, I'm just not a fan of it. And I don't think it's true. And I'm going to explain why now. First disclaimer, I am aware that in China, dinosaur bones are called dragon bones or used in traditional folk medicine. I'm not saying that dinosaur bones can't be attributed to dragons. They certainly are. Clearly have been. It's like I said, in China. Even the fact that most Chinese dragons usually have long at the end of their name, which even means dragon. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that dinosaur bones aren't attributed to dragons. What I'm saying is that dragons didn't originate from dinosaur bones. They existed, the myths of them existed before people discovered bones and then attributed to them. And this is a big difference. So the reason why is kind of just... Well, there are a few, I think, well, there's two main issues I have with this. The first main issue I have is that the further back you go with dragon myths, the further back, go, as far back as you can, pretty much all dragons just turn into snakes. There's very large, very dangerous snakes. And this is something I've posted about on my blog, this is something I've talked about when like, ever people ask me the question is, you don't need to discover dinosaur bones to take something you already know about and then make it big. Which is basically what happened with dragons is dragons are just snakes that over time the stories about them became more and more embellished and they became more and more grander until you get the dragon. I think one analogy I compared it is like dragons are basically what happens when people are describing snakes while also playing a telephone game. So you have like, oh I saw this snake, it was 20 feet long. Actually, giant fucking snake. Cobras maybe that big. Not sure. Okay, so I saw the snake. It's ten feet long. Okay, you tell someone this. Like, I saw the snake. It was... And they tell the story. Like, hey, did you hear, like, Joe saw a snake? It was, like, fifty feet long. And then they tell someone else. Like, did you hear about this thing Joe said? It's, like, a fifty-foot-long snake with wings. It's basically just... It adds and adds and adds and adds until you end up from an original serpent to, basically, a dragon. And... This wouldn't have happened within, like, just a conversation. This happens over thousands of years of cultural development. Because the first dragons, like I said, are basically just giant snakes. Like, if you go look at the Greek dragons, you basically just have large snakes. They're abnormally large snakes. They don't even necessarily have features that set them apart from other snakes, other than the fact that they're abnormally large. So instead of having a snake that's, like, ten feet long, you have a snake that's, like, two miles long. And that's what the Greek dragons were. They're just very big snakes. In Egypt, their dragons are cobras, just with wings. The Nagas are cobras. 
as you said, they're they're just cobras. The, the Naga is a cobra, a semi divine cobra, but basically every cobra was considered a Naga, so just they're just cobras. It's like the Kitsune. So that's my one issue is that you don't. And it's the same issue I have with the hypothesis that the Griffin originated from the Ceratops thing. Is Griffins are such obvious chimeras, you don't need to discover fossils to create something like that. Like, you don't need to discover bones to say, oh, what if we combined a bird and a lion? Like, an eagle with a lion. What would that be like? Like, no one is looking at, like, the Greek chimera like, hmm, I wonder what prehistoric creature they could have discovered to come up with a half lion, half goat. Like, you're not doing that. No one's wondering what like, the origin of the Sphinx is, like, it's just, they're chimeras. They took two creatures that they already knew about and mashed them together. There's actually, I'm probably gonna link the article in the description that talks about the issues with the Proceratops thing. So, yeah, first issue is that you don't need to discover dinosaur fossils to take something you already know and just embellish it. You don't need to discover fossils to make snakes and crocodiles that you already know about and that everyone already knows about and just make them bigger and slightly scarier. That's the first issue. Second issue is I think a lot of people like the idea of dinosaurs coming from dragons because I think in their minds they're very similar creatures and they're not. And I don't mean that in the sense that oh birds actually had feathers so they really weren't reptilian at all. I may have misspoke. Dinosaurs had feathers so they weren't reptilian at all. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, like I said, the original dragons were very serpentine creatures, and dinosaurs weren't. Which isn't to say they kind of, like, discovered unarticulated skeletons and associate them. They could have... Take up, sorry. But the issue is the idea of dinosaurs and dragons looking similar is a very modern idea. And there's another article I have, or rather post on my blog, that's actually pretty good, where it talks about, like, how the different art change, like, the different styles of art in, like, modern pop culture with dragons, and how it's changed over the years, and how it seems to kind of be following the trend of, like, sort of dinosaur art. So, like, if you look at, like, the early editions of Dungeons & Dragons, the dragons are very, like, kind of heavy, bloated. They're very, like, retrosaurian, like, dinosaur art. And then as develops, and, like, as we go through the dinosaur renaissance, and dinosaurs become more active and fast-paced and upright and all that stuff, it seems like the dragons kind of fall, and the dragons actually become pretty cat-like. So that's... My second issue is... The idea of dinosaurs and dragons being similar creatures and similar looking creatures is a more modern concept that I feel like came about because people discovered dinosaurs, they defined dinosaurs, dinosaurs became popular in culture, and then we took that and applied it to the modern dragon rather than prehistoric people discovering dinosaurs and applying it to the ancient dragon. So that's basically it. My two, so those are my two main issues with it. Issue number one is you don't need to discover these bones to embellish creatures that already exist. And number two is, at the end of the day, original dragons and dinosaurs just weren't all that similar to begin with. So, like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'm gonna try and have the next video out earlier next week, but no promises. And... Maybe I'll monetize these things? No. Alright. I'm just thinking out loud now. Like, comment, subscribe, leave suggestions, all that jazz, and I hope you like it, so keep watching. Um, goodbye.